Thank you so much. Right, so um, uh, I'm, I'm based out of Brussels and I was recruited to Swedish Match almost a decade ago because uh, we had the feeling that it would be possible to lift the EU ban on snus, maybe slightly naive, but um, I guess that's the, the benefit of being Swedish. And as you know, with hindsight, that we, it was an utter failure. And I've been thinking quite a lot about how it is so difficult to do something which is so obvious. And I mean, it, it, when I joined the company, I was like, this can't be difficult. I mean, we're, we're all living in a rational world. There's a lot of people that understand reason. Uh, but obviously, that wasn't the case. So. I think, I think my starting point is that just to, to look at the world of today and all the problems we're facing. And we have the wars, we have migrant crisis, we have awful human disasters in terms of diseases, we have the global warming, the plastics in the sea, the war in Ukraine. And I mean, it, it's a rather unstable situation compared to 20 years ago when EU, Europe was reunited and everything was happy galore. And on top of that, we have uh, <laughs> leaders who are not making, the, making us really sleep sound at night for, for, for various reasons. Uh, that's at least my, my point of view. So I think in this rather complex world, tobacco policy is straightforward and, and it sort of makes sense. And, and wh why do we have this war? Or why do we have this effort? Yes, because tobacco smoking kills 7 million people each year, according to the WHO. 7 million people is an awful lot of people. And, and uh, it's a very basic narrative, and I think it's best put in, in FCTC 5.3. There is a fundamental and irreconcilable conflict between the tobacco industry's interest and public health policy interests. And obviously, it's a well-oiled machinery, and their strategy is to regulate tobacco out of existence using an already existing global structure, which is the WHO. It's been, it's been there since after the Second World War. It's a perfect industry. It's, it's a very rational approach. And obviously, the tactics is, the tactics is to, to, to make sure that you have a, a regulatory approach as similar as possible all over the globe. And then you engage and build your case with credible and loyal stakeholders for legitimacy. And it's the public health advocates, it's the NGOs, academics, the, the good industry, as opposed to us, which is the, the death industry. Uh, and, uh, and then you have people like Bloomberg, someone should hold them to account for, for the misery he spreads. But, but, but there is the clique of the good people. It's this, it's this righteousness church. And obviously, this... Uh, the, the kind of behavior that you have in this kind of environment is that if you have a clear goal, you can't, you, you can't indulge in compromise because that defeats the purpose. You can't allow diverging opinions either, and you can't have different strategies. So uh, you, have, you just keep to your strategy because they have a plan. Don't lose sight of the plan. And of course, in this environment, the consumer, which is smokers, is totally uh, forgotten. And life-saving <coughs> products uh, fr from the industry, which is defined as bad, is a part of the problem. Uh, and I think there is a um, role of uh, functional stupidity in all of this. And, and it's, um, it's a management theory that I came across uh, by, by a Swedish pro professor. And it's, I mean, he's looking to why highly intelligent people are acting in a very stupid manner. Uh, and, and one of the quotes I found in his book is that the most apparent knowledge intensive organizations can be pretty stupid. And when I think about the WHO or the European Union looking at regulation, you're like, these are clever people, highly educated. Why don't they see uh, what we're seeing? And I think one good example is the, um, tobacco-free Finland, I'm sure you, many of you have seen the tweet from them saying that, you know what, smokers shouldn't uh, shift to, to vaping or snus. I mean, it's equally dangerous. What kind of responsible public, public health body would do that? Yeah, the Finns. 
And, uh, and you, I think we can see the WHO awards Viktor Orban in the fight against tobacco industry tactics. If I remember correctly, Hungary is one of the worst countries in terms of smoking related disease and one of the highest smoking prevalence. I mean, awarding Viktor Orban for anything is fairly strange. They should give us a prize. I mean, honestly, they should give us a prize. Uh, or the industry that's actually bringing down smoking prevalence. But uh, I guess that wouldn't work for WHO. Uh, but, but what about us then? I mean, I think, I think that's if, you, if, if the other side is extremely organized, we are less so. Um, and we have a different doctrine. I mean, we, we might be this more fun-seeking people. Uh, we're f in favor of liberties, etc. And we're a very disparate group of people. And we do have unco a fairly uncoordinated regulatory approach. So if the other side is extremely coordinated, I would say that we are very uncoordinated. And I would also say that there there is an internal... Um, diverging views in this, in this group of people amongst maybe mainly the industry and, and the best example is this epic fight between two of the big companies on heat not burned versus uh, e-cigarettes and uh, I mean if you, if you look at the number of smokers out there I think we have consumers for all of us and if people like heat not burn and not these cigarettes it's the choice of the consumer and so and, and we don't have to have that nitty fighting so i think that's another picture illustrating sort of our our, our part of the um, the pitch so uh, what 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 is it that that makes change happen there has been a management books written about us of course as well but I mean, I think crucially, you need a lot of consumers that is, that is driving because the consumer is also a voter and a taxpayer. And when it comes to politicians and policymakers, it's basic um, public choice theory. I mean, they want to get reelected, so they need to please the electorate. Uh, and I, we've seen, I mean, there's some trends that is pointing towards that we might approach a tipping point. Uh, and is that we have a movement on the go, and we see this. Uh, it's a consumer-driven mo uh, movement, and it's difficult to stop. But I think it could also be quite difficult for it to grow, because there's a lot of bad science, there's a lot of bad press, there's a lot of bad regulation out there, and there's a lot of bad official advice. And let me return to the Finnish advice. Don't switch from cigarettes to snooze, because it's equally dangerous. Um, the second trend is, or the, the, the second concept is, is this strong enough to stick? But I, and I think it is, because this is a movement where people are actually taking control of their lives. They want to change their life, and they want to do it themselves. So they're free agents. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of very, very, very nice stories out there about people who change their lives. So I think it, it, it is a very strong message. And at some point, it will trickle down to, uh, to the regulators, but it will take time and persistence. Um, but we, I think we should also ask ourselves, where is this change happening? And uh, one of this chart here is, is illustrating smoking reduction amongst young Norwegian women, which is extraordinary. So today you have 1% Swedish Norwegian, uh, Norwegian women smoking. I think it's 16 to 24. 1%. That's a pretty impressive end game goal. Uh, and you have 14% using snow. So I mean, something is shifting. But this development is, as it looks today, perhaps more possible in, in um, richer countries where people can make choices. There's an awful lot of parts of the world which is less fortunate. And I just found this WHO representative urge stronger tobacco control in Syria 2016. I mean, Syria has different, but they, they, I mean, I'm sure they have problems with smoking, but there's like other stuff going on there which might be more 
uh, urgent to deal with. And, and this kind of arrogance from the WHO is, is not supporting them. Uh, so I will just... So um, the, the question is, will there be a tipping point? And I'm absolutely sure that it, it will. I mean, it, it is possible. It's, it's far away. We have seen the tipping point, I think, in some countries. But uh, the outcome will be determined by, by good regulation, acceptable regulation or, or bad regulation. So I think if we have good or acceptable regulation, we will see transition. Um, and I think we should discuss what we can all bring to the table, because I think uh, my sense is that we need to coordinate ourselves a bit better and, and push the same agenda. And on that note, uh, Chesty Puller, a uh, famous U uh, US military, said we're surrounded. That simplifies our problem because we are surrounded by uh, tobacco control and we need to address them in a pragmatic way. And as David Levy put up this quote from Yogi Berra, if you don't know where uh, you're going, you might wind up somewhere, someplace else. And I think that's also some quite important thing that we, we just need to know what we want and then crack on with it. Thanks.